that's the funny thing of comparing yourself to others too is like some people get really good at a thing and then you're trying to pick and choose so it's like just because like for a listener at home like Ramin is like so incredible at sucking his own ass mm-hmm. that doesn't mean there's not like other parts of his life that like there's not other, there's not other party parts he can't reach <laughs> parts that you couldn't improve yeah them. and the suction like it, there could be more like suction going on yeah he's a, 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 as as much as you're admiring his ass sucking yeah he also goes to bed the night beating himself up about how wanting to be a better ass sucker mm-hmm. okay. the boys are back Ooh. feeling good if you're not watching on video i totally understand johnny depp now i get i get all of it now i get what it is to be that scarves jewelry ex- excessive uh decorations cranial decorations everything decorations i understand now you're looking so sharp you you rolled in there i wasn't wearing anything i was wearing this shirt and no pants. It's and a fine then, shirt. It's a fine uh, lack of pants. I, I should have put a. I should have put a different. I don't really have a fancy shirt, but I don't know. But uh, and I saw Ramin, and I'm in the. Uh, I just moved to Raleigh, and I'm like, I know just where I have a top hat that I can wear. <laughs> Sweet. So now we're styling. We're gonna be talking about uh, conspicuous consumption today. Some aspects of uh, what drives humans to spend in the way that they do in these ways that don't show a clear utility in the way that uh, like this this hat isn't helping me survive yours has like yours could if there was like a head blow or something like that whatever that flowery thing is could maybe blunt some of the force yeah for the most part But so could anything. So could just a shirt wrapped around my head. Yeah. But this is style. You look very good at that. You should start. Uh, I, I hope that uh, I hope that at, at the camp out, you'll when you play music, you'll wear like something. I should wear several outfits. Like yeah, I should several, do several should, outfit <laughs> changes while like I loop the last thing I did. And then I go do an outfit change because yeah. I mean, it's. Like, and Mid, also when I'm song outfit. Change. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, so many uh, big. Why can't I think of big name people? I mean, Lady Gaga or Madonna or whoever does outfit changes throughout the the course of the evening. Mick Jagger, too. I think this Mick Jagger a, does. This is a solid look for you. Did Catherine help with this one? too? Oh, yeah. She helped with. Uh, I mean, these are her sunglasses, Gosh, she's her good. hat, her pearls. This shirt is <laughs> is a type of shirt pearls. that needs cufflinks, so I had to rubber band it down, which <laughs> as I was thinking about cufflinks, I'm thinking the suit is such, it has so much conspicuous consumption all over yeah. it. Like you're thinking the tie, the pocket square, the cufflinks, the, the under vest thing. Like when you just think of a regular suit, it's like, ooh, that's conspicuous consumption, but there's conspicuous consumption on top of... Yeah, like there's so many things you can add that don't have any point. I mean, the when's the last time you saw someone use the the breast pocket? Like it's it's odd. That just shows what class I'm in. (laughs) I want to change that. I want to see one at least one a week. That would change my the the class I'm in. But no, I don't see them. I I remember someone talking about how like the pocket square is important because it means that you chose like it means that you chose the suit. It means that you put it together, which that was their I mean, it's one of these fancy people that likes money and dresses up and stuff. So that's their argument. It's like that means it was a decision that someone didn't dress you. You made the choice to put that. It wasn't just a suit you got at JCPenney, but I don't understand that at all. Are there even shirts without pocket squares? I mean, yeah, there are, but I mean, they all have pocket squares. I think if it doesn't have a pocket square, it's like, wow, what did you get that pocket square (laughs) tailored off of your shirt? 
<laughs> I've but never it's used always one. changing. That's the thing with fashion and keeping up with the Joneses and everything. That's what much of this is about is it's always it's the star bellied snitch um, and and just more more and more expensive ways of putting the star on the belly to be in the in group and then finding an even more expensive way to get that star off of your belly once all of the losers have stars too because they want it to be like you yeah and around and around it goes and that's what the pocket square is like it is it is the the star star breasted sneak <laughs> which the verification check i thought was going to go through a movement of that but it never really did i think the verification check is still um it's still good to have and i find myself looking you 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 notice it if you're looking at someone's comments like when this the check shows up like who's that person mm -hmm. that's a person and then you realize it's not a person it's just someone that has the check but you're like oh it's, it's a someone yeah i haven't figured out how to get on instagram i had it on twitter and then when i changed my handle it went away why did and you I change it again some sort of because it used to be at Shane Comedy. That's why oh, I made everything yeah. way back when, because I thought it would be just easier on stage than saying like, it's M-A-U-S-S -S or uh, whatever. But that was back when like my model was, what I'll do is I'll go around to comedy clubs and I'll do a really good job. And then people will follow me on the social medias. And then that's how I'll spread my, and that's not how it works. You get <laughs> good is. at social media <laughs> and then you go and do a shit job at the comedy club. <laughs> <laughs> I did the wrong way. I did a great job at comedy shit on social media. We got to start remembering that before we embark on anything it's like nope do the reverse of how you think it works <laughs> yeah. do the opposite the the subsidiary thing and then don't focus on the main thing when Not you're really, really, really funny in a comedy club a lot of people are just like cool i guess i like comedy clubs like they don't attribute it to you or if you uh, bomb they're like i guess stand-up comedy isn't for me it's just like it's just like this must be what a comedy club is like, yeah <laughs> you know no so i never you can thought of that crush and people are like nice job and the, the time when people talk to you the most it's when you struggled a little bit and they i thought you were it. good <laughs> Yeah. I thought you were really funny. I don't know what <laughs> yeah, they yeah. were up to. And you remember their face like they weren't laughing that hard. <laughs> God, I don't even remember it. It's so far away. I'm going to do a set next week and I don't know what I'm going to oh, talk man. about, like George Bush or something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of one new joke recently and it's a butthole joke. I'm like, really, Shane? This is like... <laughs> <laughs> it's been that long since stand-up it was like what's this new stand-up joke that you have to try out i'm like no i have this pretty decent butthole one liner <laughs> <laughs> that's it doesn't fit anything that i'm after or what i do or Good. anything yeah open with it yeah um but yeah i'm 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 that that's part of i've been i've been real anxious uh the last couple days because I got, I moved to Raleigh. I stopped at Fish on the way there, impromptu uh, fish uh, show that happened to be on my way. A friend was there. We partied for two days. I slept for like two hours each night and then continued to drive to Raleigh. Took modafinil so that I could not, uh, the stuff that I hate but keeps me from driving off the road. It's the one and, without euphoria, right? Yeah. Oh, I and hate that, stuff without euphoria. <laughs> I know. It's so stupid. And then I, that's why it's in the emergency kit. That's why I hold, uh, that's why I've had it for six years because it doesn't <laughs> make you feel good. That's I know the I advantage. make advantage. Riddle and I probably would have gone through by now. Oh, yeah. Cause it's got a little bit of uh, benefit euphoria wise. And mm -hmm. I know I make art and stuff that sometimes like without without the lack of euphoria we wouldn't appreciate euphoria without the darkness we wouldn't appreciate the light but i don't believe that i want it to be all euphoria come on yeah. give me the option i'll do that but since this is what we get i'm like no nah, this is how i designed it oh, i had so much euphoria i depleted all of my neurochemicals in my brain for two days then drove and then when i got here i was so wired 
I couldn't sleep. And then I was just like panicked because it's noisy here. Then I didn't think about street. It's not noisy, but there's there it's right on a fairly busy road and it's it's fine for living. But I didn't think of it in terms of a studio until mm -hmm. I got in. I was like, oh, no, how am I going to record? I had big dreams of like, oh, I'll be able to have a, I'll make a studio in the living room and have scientists over and stuff like that and have it. And that's can't happen instead i you're had the to, only like, person that dreams of having scientists over <laughs> it's why our society is crumbling you're the one human that's like instead of imagining you know the dallas maverick cheerleaders or whatever coming over you're imagining like this uh microscope over here oh yeah petri dish over here oh today i today i went uh i, I went to the uh lakeside retreats i met with a uh, um uh, Soup? Soupy? Uh, uh, no, I I met with uh, this guy, uh, Stephen Churchill, who's a Stephen's paleontologist. Soup is also called Stephen. Yeah, Super Steve. Yeah, and uh, so Stephen Churchill uh, is a paleontologist that that worked on one of the biggest discoveries of uh, like they just found this huge. Huge. I, I, t I actually talked about it once on here before where they had to ha hire like small females to like get through these like little pockets and caving things. It was like this exceptionally dangerous thing to get to like just this gold mine of hominin ancestors um, and like, you know, like missing missing link kind of stuff. Mm. And so anyway, I showed him around. And he's going to come to the fest and bring like casts and stuff of bones and fossils. And cool. also people, if they have like arrowheads or fossils or rocks or anything, and they're wondering what it is, they can bring it and he'll try to identify it for oh, them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to be like, oh, this is nothing. This is like something we found at uh, Spencer's gift, but it's really worth 30 grand. <laughs> and then sticks it yeah. in his pocket. More likely, he probably won't know what it, I don't know how much. Like a paleontologist knows, like if you just hand them a regular rock without researching or anything, you know, like who I I have, I because there's so many different ones. There's ones that do dinosaurs. There's ones that do like different primates and stuff like that. And so yeah, and you need tenure before you can even be the person that dusts off the bone. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, yeah, anyway, I get all excited and nerded out about science things. But does the mic even pick up the traffic? Uh, so far, have you heard any? Nope. I think it's perfect. Yeah, uh, I think these I, are exceptionally directional microphones. I That, and I went to the bedroom in the house, which is at the back. It only has one window. It's not directly facing the street. I got three inch dense insulation and then put other insulation in the window and sealed it as much as i could there's still a little sound you know how i'm like a little bit of a perfectionist when it oh, comes yeah. to this stuff and uh oh man so it was a whole and i also realized i i've never lived alone before ever really yeah i was like oh that's weird that's a fun fact about myself that i just not learned once not for a month not for a week oh, not for a, oh, i mean yeah, a day but. yeah yeah all the time i was alone like you like know, on the I, road but like not road a place the on the lease well and then like I, I i always had roommates but the dad pad Okay, um, that doesn't count. Would would often have, or no, it was the bro pad back when I lived there. That that had those bros would sometimes be gone for like everyone was on the road all the time. And then when I was dating April, she was a comic, so she's on the road. So there'd be times when I was like alone at home for a month. But I was beachfront like, oh, Malibu had. property. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I've never just had a place to myself before, and it was like I was like. It wasn't that or the uh, losing all my neurochemicals, all, <laughs> my, all my dopamine and serotonin at fish. Um, s something about it. The last couple days, the first couple days that I got here, it was like I was unsettled. I was like anxious. And now, now I'm great. It's great. Nice. I have a place to myself. I'm excited. It's uh, it, I could just feel my brain like rewiring, like having to adjust to a thing. And even though I've spent tons of time by myself, I haven't been alone like since COVID, basically.
You, you mean know. since March or since February 2020? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, so yeah. It's now I'm digging nice. it. After this, I'm going to go have a fire outside. Just look at a fire by myself. It's going to be great. Nice. What an eventful few days. I've yeah. just vacuumed the carpet. <laughs> you've put up insulation. You've lost all your dopamine. You've driven 1,800 hours. You've d- d- regained your dopamine. You've made a fire. You got that hat. Yeah. <laughs> I had the hat already. <laughs> oh, um, but uh, but yeah, being by yourself, you can't. The uh, leading back into conspicuous consumption, it's like different different decisions are made. You know, like I'm used to eating out all the time, like going to restaurants and stuff, hanging out with friends, buying things, and it's already like. I'm by myself. I'm like, oh, I'll go to the deli at the grocery store and just get <laughs> like, you know, cheap, good, healthy sustenance. <laughs> yeah it's weird like you you make healthier choices alone mm-hmm. so but it's um, less fun so let's set up the idea of conspicuous consumption We're, because this is a fun one and it's also going to build on a lot of past ideas um and it, it's in line with many of the things that we talked about before but it's it's just for me it's one of one of those mind-blowing things especially as someone um, that, uh, I, I feel like I've mismanaged money for my whole adult life. And that was when I first started hearing about, and especially when Wouldn't I was Wouldn't it be younger, great if you go the whole span? The whole, yeah, never Yeah, if you go to the grave, they like, well. never was good with money. <laughs> I did the whole ride. <laughs> You were responsible. You ended up where I am, too. (laughs) I think that's a pretty easy goal to have, actually. I think a lot of people crush that goal. Um, But this this is something that was, you know, when I first started hearing about it was life changing for me. And it's just uh, like everything. It's just um, there there's uh, there's people that dispute it. And there's some ideas that are more out there and, and and everything else. But. I think that it's uh, really, really explanatory about some of these things that might seem confusing. And basically, the idea kind of, uh, you know, starting out, it's about it's it's kind of taking an evolutionary perspective on why we spend in showy ways and not necessarily just like fancy, fancy hats like this, which, by the way, this was a pimp costume that I got at a store on the way to a wedding rehearsal, uh, my brother's wedding rehearsal in Milwaukee was like a hundred bucks. There was a store that had just nothing but pimp clothes. I got a hundred bucks for a hat, a full suit, socks, tie, everything. Kane? (laughs) <laughs> no no cane That's rims no rims yeah, isn't part of the suit a hundred bucks as you nice. can see it's not the highest quality material in the world but um uh but yeah so why you know not not just we're not just talking about like rims and um lifestyles of the rich and famous and owning a man those are the easy ones. A lamborghini but even things like um uh like getting smart water like who look how smart i am says smart right <laughs> on my water i am smart things like buying... jennifer aniston drinks it right? <laughs> yeah i think so I, uh, cameron I, diaz no is evian jennifer aniston is smart water uh <laughs> voss is tech bros um i've never had a voss i've wanted to those ones that are in the cylinders they look really expensive. And that black water too. The I water that's black. I I haven't seen that. Oh, you haven't? Maybe it's a strictly Los Angeles thing, but I love the trend of black things like black charcoal toothpaste and it just flies in the face of what you think is healthy and thus they can sell you on that. It's like, yeah, it's super healthy. It's charcoal. Yeah. The water is black. It's healthy. It's got all the minerals. <laughs> That's why it's black. <laughs> Homeopathic things too are like another way of of advertising too. You know, you're you're advertising different traits about yourself, and so 
So, I'll, but I'll, I'll start with the, uh, you know, going, how about I give like a spoiler and then I build up. Uh, yeah, start that. with the juicy. So, um, so the, this guy, um, Jeffrey Miller, who, uh, who he's, he kind of went red pill, but he's, uh, what's that mean? He, 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 he uh, uh, you mean in his particular case? Yeah. I mean, uh, like I can take a guess it's more, um, like, I, I don't know if it's Trump or if it's women or the devil or what what is red pill really? I mean, because there's the Matrix version of it, but it's been co-opted to mean like, well, it's all. I, I don't mean to talk shit about the guy, but he got in some trouble for some like uh, like uh, trying to be taboo on Twitter. Like, I don't know, seven years ago or something like Assault that. Assault is good because it time. feels good. He just that kind like, of thing. yeah, it oh. was, uh, I was it, being sarcastic. I'm Mark Twain. <laughs> and then he just like dug in and like got into like the manosphere stuff and whatnot. And, uh, a little unfortunate, oh, in my it's opinion, like but a genius the game guy. stuff, the game. Um, yeah, it's like mm-hmm. men, men's rights, men's rights activists. That's red pill. A, a little bit in that i mean i think it's he he's an uh, he's an exceptionally intelligent sophisticated person so that's definitely oversimplifying it but man he's uh, in my opinion not always using his powers for good um <laughs> he just follows every fucking uh like um provocateur on twitter and stuff dude. like he's just into that uh, free speech libertarian blah 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 i get it and um, it's a, a lot of the evolutionary psych people started going this way because they got attacked for very, saying like gender differences and stuff. And anytime people get attacked for anything, they start like digging in and now they're like, you know, start attacking the side that's attacking them. Which yeah. In that Have you seen that cartoon so. with uh, like the person? Is sta- I think Elon shared it, but someone is standing in the middle of you know, a a division between red and blue. And then the blue person shoves the neutral person over to the right wing. And then the right wing person picks them up and goes, Hey brother, are you okay? (laughs) That's what they do too. That's what they do. They have just have a helping hand. (laughs) Really what it is. It's a bunch of, uh, it's a bunch of people that like, it's really easy to, uh, like the right doesn't want to learn about science, but if you can give them a fancy sounding word to like own the libs with, they will mm-hmm. love you for it. And so there's like a market for that. Um, so, you know, we're all trying to make a living. Um, Who but- are some of the evolutionary biologists that that turn to the dark side in their anger? Uh, oh God, God Saad is like just an awful, like, oh my God, egomaniac, just obnoxious fucking buffoon. His name is God Sad. Yeah. And he calls himself, it's G A A D. He calls himself the, the God, the God father and stuff <laughs> like this. This whole, it started as this hokey, adorable Imagine thing. You're, you're, you're like signing up for classes and you're like, oh no, I've got the God father. <laughs> Yeah, because it was like, you know, at first it was just like a dorky scientist that gave himself this dumb name. And I'm like, oh, now you think that about yourself. Like, nah, not working for me anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, he's just in the Rogan Manosphere uh, shit as well. And so are we. So have a bunch of fancy words, you know. Um, I want us to be on Rogan in 2014. That would be great for our show. (laughs) <laughs> yeah if we could get on rogan in 2014 it would be so good for our for our show uh, <laughs> we got to get a time machine and get on in 2014 he would have us on because we're time travelers <laughs> i don't want to be on in 2022 so, that's stupid he would have us on because we're time <laughs> yeah but if we could get on in 2014 ooh, mama <laughs> that's good press for the show yeah I uh, so actually both of those guys are into like consumer behavior and did really really uh, impressive work I thought in the consumer behavior domains of okay, this kind and of stuff. Jeffrey Miller both of them why we spend money based on these evolutionary principles and advertising and everything and one of the cool things that Miller put together was he boiled I don't think it's perfect but it's a fun take on things is that he 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 did um like so 
So some real basics of evolution uh, of uh, conspicuous consumption is you have from from very, very early on from the first multicellular organisms. And once there's predators and uh, predator and prey, there starts to be signaling that takes place. Like, and especially during the um, uh, once there was uh, sexes about 1.2 billion years ago, but then really during the Cape Cambrian explosion, which I think is like 600 million. The what explosion? The, animals, the Cambrian explosion. Cambrian? Uh, I think Cambrian. Is that what Coheed Cambrian? and Cambria is referencing? I never thought of what Coheed and Cambria meant. And then when you said Cambrian, I'm like, oh, is it about the explosion of animal life and the stars or something? Yeah, about about 538 million years ago, it, there was just an explosion of life. A lot of oh, people so think yesterday. it had to do with when eyes first started really developing. Uh, that was a great Once invention. You could see things. Yeah, just it's, a blind universe of bumping into stuff. That's what a lot of it was. And then there was like little light you could see, like even even little worms and stuff could could make out. They they had like little eye spots where or what they'd call eye spots where you could see like light versus dark or you could just sense that to like know to move towards something or away from something. Mm. And then from that, that I just kept on evolving to get more and more sophisticated. Isn't that but, interesting that the the computer has kind of followed that trajectory where computers didn't start with a monitor, like computers started with punch cards and like did it did it did it did it, and then eventually it grew to have a visual component to it, and then the visual component had color and like more pixel definition and things like that. So it's kind of fun to see like oh, it's kind of repeating itself in the the computer world. Like it didn't have eyes yet. Evolution everywhere, not always in like some direction of progress, of course, like uh, that. That's the thing. Technology is deceiving because technology does not necessarily like next year's phones going to be so much better than this year. It could be worse or whatever else. So there's going to be little blips here and there. But technology is on like a pretty steady march yeah, toward trends getting up better sure. and better uh, evolution doesn't always go that way that's uh, like better in terms of evolution doesn't mean shit like things just happen and and once in a while like the thing that was just the best thing you could be a year ago now is getting eaten alive <laughs> or uh, like ran out of food and is starving or just crashing or whatever but yeah that's what we are we're the thing that's uh, that's outdone everything else for now for now and so once you have eyes and things and you can you can start then you can start to displaying things and you have all these th these signals and they're not always so there's there's the idea is there's kind of these differences between honest like how do you honestly size something up and how do you know if something's faking and things slip through all the time like a butterfly will be poisonous to something so that predator will be like i'm gonna stay away from that will evolve to like whatever is colored like that i'm gonna stay away from it then some other moth will evolve like the almost the exact same colors and it's not poisonous so it'd be great food for that bird or whatever but it stays away from it and it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect for the predator to be like eh, i'll eat something else why why take my chance so it's not always this perfect um homing in of of things because there's usually more than just a predator and a prey going on but so how do you uh, so as things get more and more complex and things like primates take off what kind of things do you look in sizing up um especially in social animals in sizing up a mate for instance which is of course, the peacock feathers, which we've talked about before, you have this really costly signal. Nothing's eaten this guy yet. He has this colorful display. He must not have had that many parasites. So even though this is a huge, stupid thing to have this big, colorful display, it's saying something about your genetics, your ability to at navigate the landscape. It's, it's signaling that you've done well enough to become a fully formed male that that can have a large display and 
keep out of parasites or whatever. Mm. Have a Quick good aside, but not quite an aside. But is there signaling that is not visual? Like, is there audio oh, yeah. signaling and smell signaling where it's not oh, real? Of course, we're audio signaling right now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> talk is cheap, and yeah, there's there's like. Uh, uh, primates all the time give false signals to things if they just like they see a, they see a bunch of food that a bunch of other primates are after and getting and they don't have a chance at getting that or they have a low too low of status or whatever they'll give the alarm call that a hawk is coming or whatever <laughs> and they all scurry <laughs> and then <they'll, laughs> said the low 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 status ape then you run in there and grab all that delightful food that you, there's no way you're going to get otherwise. <laughs> and then there's probably social cost involved if you do that too many times. So then you got to punish cheaters and things like that as as various. Uh, Damn. Um, I'm so to... glad I'm not low status. I'm so glad I'm, <laughs> I'm medium to low status. <laughs> that would suck to be low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 you don't want to be low in any species i mean mm -hmm. it's life is just going to be really difficult and uh and there's there's ways that you can work on other things and get this that and increase your status and everything else but yeah it's of course it sucks to be at the bottom which is why the uh, a lot of these uh, a lot of animals with hierarchy you know there's so many animals that are just solitary so they don't have as much of a need for this flamboyance other than in maybe mate selection or something yeah that social primates do but we have uh, because we're being eyed up by so many of our own kind and so and it, you know we're not just advertising to like not be eaten by a cheetah or something like that where that's the bare minimum two it's people the bare minimum you can be as a human is not be eaten by a cheetah yeah and that's like we don't even have to worry about that stuff humans have always been the greatest threat to humans pretty much like pretty much from the onset that and volcanoes and shit like that but I don't right. know. In Volcanoes have probably patients. only killed like 15 people if you look at the numbers. <laughs> Acts of God, I should say. Yeah. As they as they call them. All of those numbers are always wrong. Like I heard some this could be total BS, but I heard somewhere like, do you know how many civilian casualties they've been in the Ukraine war so far? 17. Just it's been like some like really low number. I'm like, what? I thought it was like 10,000 or something. It's like, no, there's only been 17 civilian casualties 17? that could be that could be wrong it could maybe be like 100 <laughs> but where i heard it it if that source from what that source said which could be wrong said that hmm. but then russian soldiers it's like in the tens of thousands or something but and then ukraine soldiers also probably high but civilians of this recent one but yeah. right in the comments the correction to that and I wasn't saying that as a, as, a, as, a, as a saying that that's the number, but just as a, did you know that only 12 people were killed by lightning, but over a hundred thousand people were killed by the common cold this year? Yeah. Yeah. Just like the little, like the, the number you think would be very high is low. And then the number you think would be low is very high. Yeah. But scratch all that Ukraine stuff. Long live Ukraine. Um, well, it's the, the that's, electric again, chair, that's just the, the that's the availability heuristic versus, you know, like the subtleties of heart disease or something. You yeah, know, heart disease is number one, scarier. right? Heart disease is number one so. killer of humans, I think, like and then cancer and then. But you, you get up in heart disease territory and then you're talking about old age and stuff, too, that would have, you know, something gets you eventually. So yeah. it's also kind of like a biased stat in my opinion it, but old age never kills you it's you're you're in old age saying. and you're more yeah you're more susceptible to I, I was hearing someone talk about cancer recently you probably already know this but it's like the odds of a cell um mutating into cancer is very very low but just since you have so many cells and the longer you're alive the odds of one of them becoming cancerous it's like 40 percent for everybody oh, eventually yeah. so 
So it's like it's it's a crazy odds, but since the, you're you're rolling the dice so many times just by being alive, of course everyone is going to develop something. I like that idea of rolling the dice so many times just by being alive. Yeah, because it's like just be... dividing, like dividing, mutating, dividing, mutating, dividing, mutating. Like, oh, sorry, one of them became cancerous after forty-seven years. Good, good run though. Good run. I feel like that could be a good piece for this episode. Something like mm. some sort of roulette table something or other would go with i'm too traumatized by vegas it gave me COVID. <laughs> did you have any lingering things or no not that i know of i mean i could drop dead in a week who knows but <laughs> the sore it was mainly the sore throat and yeah. it was gone after two days but it lingered for like maybe a week week and a half oh, okay i'm just so used to saying whatever about myself that like I'm just like, and then I'll share your things too <laughs> that you tell me. I'll also share those things. Yeah, uh, we're we're Kathy Griffin everyone's... on Seinfeld. We can't <laughs> help it. No, um, we're not that bad. You actually no. don't share a lot of things. Like, there's a lot of things like off off mic that you're very good about keep withholding mm. people's um, secrets and mm. and things, and even the random talking shit, which isn't even talking shit, but you'll be like, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to talk bad about him, but he kind of has been little red pilled <laughs> since 2018, <laughs> which they own it. They have like the red pill icon on their yeah, bio. They're owning it. Yeah. <laughs> they blue yeah. pill is an insult. Yeah. 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 They're let's right. go, Brandon. Yeah. Let's <laughs> arm our children, whatever. The caricature. Uh, yeah. Those, they've been uh irritating to watch but still like some of the research so i think um, reality is just split though sometimes maybe it's what do you mean just um just they're they're in a completely different their data stream and the way their head works like that is reality and then to us with our data stream and the way we think it's like no they're clearly stupid idiots mm -hmm. and then they're thinking no they're clearly stupid idiots and if we got in a room together and talked it out we would probably not move an inch like it would just be two completely different realities and eventually i don't know it's it's going to lead to something stranger than than what we're seeing right now i don't know I'm not I'm not so quick to discount others as stupid. I think it's just they're they're experiencing the world in a different way. Yeah. Like, I don't mm. think you're you're dumb. You're just you're getting a completely different reality stream. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. And we're witnessing it now. It's kind of odd. Yeah. But maybe they're dumb, stupid idiots. Who knows? There's some dumb, stupid idiots, <laughs> too. And, you know, people look at angry in this or that. Or like, there's also just. The prospect of fame and money and stuff is really appealing. Both of those guys have done very well for themselves on social media. They just decided that they wanted to like try to be one of these red pill, sciencey, celebrity, Rogan sphere types. And they, you know, they certainly have way more Twitter followers than fucking uh, uh, Stephen Churchill. At, at, mm -hmm. uh, at Duke or wherever he's at because he's just a regular old scientist that just made like groundbreaking discoveries that's all and so he has like probably 2,000 Twitter followers or something maybe but, that'll be cool in 10 years the way that norm core became a very fashionable thing for American apparel like just beige t-shirt and jeans that are one size too big in the 80s we've talked about many times like it's all flashy sparkling glitter things and then it becomes norm core so then perhaps norm core scientists like people that just quietly do their research and don't have like interesting ideas about race and yeah. stuff. like they're just a regular <laughs> scientist person like that's really popular in 10 years who knows like your average scientist like almost never talks about politics or these social issues it's, it's so crazy all the ones that are popular have lots of ideas about the trans community or whatever like really the 10 scientists that are like outspoken about trans this and that are all like the most famous scientists on twitter now like, <laughs> what the fuck? but anyhow conspicuous consumption so the idea is is that that it, um it, yeah there's like honest signaling because then in terms of cooperation there's um there's 
there's things like reciprocal altruism, like I scratch your back, you scratch mine sort of thing. You first. One of my, <laughs> one of my favorite. Hold on. I got to go clean my back scratching nails. <laughs> the bathroom's that way. Where are you going? <laughs> uh, my back is scratched <laughs> and I haven't had to reciprocate. <laughs> one way altruism. Why did, why did a mind under matter and... <laughs> Shane gave her a mean a back scratch. <laughs> it starts itching 20 minutes later. I'm like, damn, I should have I should have reciprocated. I could have gotten a second scratch. <laughs> now I'm funked. <laughs> so there's these vampire bats that carry uh, uh, who cares? Maybe I talked about it before. Are you it's kidding me? Don't awesome. don't bail on vampire bats. Say whatever you're gonna say about vampire bats. Vampire bats, they'll go and like suck the, the blood off of cattle or whatever and bring it back to their offspring. <laughs> and because you can come up and empty handed on on hunts, they are they they'll they have a system where they'll like feed other offspring that aren't their own um and but they, they've done studies like will they just always do that and one of the things that they did was they just inflated so you can tell if a bat's full of like filled the tank with blood because it's just like gullets swollen mm. and uh and so they just artificially inflated the thing's neck with air so it looked like it was full of blood but it wasn't and then it like went back and didn't feed any of the offspring any blood because it didn't have any blood, but it looked like it did. And then all the other ones stopped feeding its offspring oh, because of no. that. Yeah. That's not very nice. It just screwed over its offspring for a little experiment. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of Did they take care of the offspring that. later? I don't think so. They just so. let them die. Damn. Probably. And uh, but bat science, bat That's science cool. is fucking ruthless, man. Um, and and oh, so it's five thirty. It's Friday. Just gas the bats. We're going home. <laughs> we'll get new ones on Monday. Um, so uh, so yeah. So there's uh, there's w different ways of evaluating honest signaling. And one of those ways to do it is to do something that's like handicapping, something that's costly, conspicuously costly in some way. Like but this is obviously very hard to do. This is why we have, uh, you know, uh, Olympics are a popular event, these sorts of things, because, you know, like, oh, I couldn't do that. Oh, I guess they are. And there's something. And and so maybe it's because it's only every four years. Uh, well, let's just say sports. In yeah, general. sports is a better one. <laughs> like, uh, is it the Olympics this year or is it in 2024? It's like always on a four, right? Four, eight. I don't know. Two, six, zero. <laughs> I think you just proved yourself wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so, so because of that, um, it, then there's. It, in humans and, and a lot of primates as well, there's various ways of like advertising status. If you're in a social group that has hierarchies and there's ways of advertising altruism and other things as well. And so, so that that's the idea of with conspicuous consumption is that um is is that your like rolls royce or whatever is the equivalent of the peacock feather you're going look i'm spending so much more than a car actually costs to uh, uh uh to advertise to you just how much money i have to burn that's how good i am at advertising or, or at accruing resources is the is the like kind of basic rule about it and historically that's that's what it's been modeled over is basically it's a way of advertising how good you are at accruing resources or being born into it or whatever else but um, being good at being like, born into it <laughs> yeah uh, um but uh people like 
in recent years, people like Miller and others have broken it down more like, well, that's that's a little too simple. And really, we're using money to advertise the various traits of who uh, of who we are. So we use money for uh, uh, to show off our our intelligence and our five personality traits. So once again, you want to try to do them? Oh man, I'm I'm struggling to get one right now. I can do them. I'll go give me it. one. I'll give you four. Really? That's how reciprocal I am. Okay, I'll do the easiest one. No, I'll do the hardest one. Um, do the mediumist one. Uh, neuroticism. Um, damn, it sucks that I've done a whole episode on these and was able to... Ne- neuroticism. When you get put on the spot, it's difficult. Conscientiousness. Conscientiousness, neuroticism, um... Or not organization. That's more conscientiousness. Mm-hmm. Uh, agreeable. Oh, agreeableness, openness, and um, um, okay, agreeable, agreeableness, neuroticism, openness. Mm, hair, hair color. <laughs> extroversion is the fifth one that you're missing. extroversion is the fifth one wait yeah. i only named four though can you go one more time for the people at home yeah it's ocean is one way to remember openness conscientiousness extroversion agreeableness and neuroticism neuroticism is like again not to be confused with narcissism neuroticism is your susceptibility to uh like negative emotions Mm -hmm. and so kind of uh, so instead we we are spending money to advertise basically our personality you know in in various ways and so so one of the one of the fun things that i thought was a a highlight of his book spent of miller's book spent um that he put out like 10 years ago or something um was that he broke down cars by what they're signaling. Oh, that's you. fun. Yeah. So, I'm going to go through them. So, Rolls-Royce is going to be the... Um, that's going to be the extroversion? No. Actually, you, you start. Yeah, well, he doesn't have Rolls-Royce on here. He just gives examples. And this was like... Mind you, this was 2009 that this book came out. So, lots changed in 13 years. Um, so we like uh, to remember that time that was right before the world really melted into social media, digital multiverse thinking. Yeah. I mean, maybe you could say 2001, but well, that's the interesting thing though, with, with now with social media, it might potentially be a cheaper way that we get to advertise that for all, for all the grievances that we have with social media we do get to display our humor and our wit and intelligence or whatever. And we have the opportunity to, it's not always representative of who we are, our disposition or our actual agreeableness or whatever. Um, but, but it is a cheap way of advertising, uh, who you are. It is free. Yeah. Rather than buying that, ferrari or whatever or I, I i don't know how you would advertise use money to advertise your sense of humor um i guess maybe like just buying tickets to comedy i i, I don't know how you go <laughs> i about have the doing most that. comedy tickets that most, guy's got a great sense of humor look how many yeah. tickets he has to Chappelle and to ricky gervais and- yeah the comedy is a hard uh, sense of humor is a hard one to fake and um and pretty uh pretty well that would be funny to fake it for 10 years and convince people and then mm. say it like i i'd have no sense of humor but <laughs> but you showed me all that cool stuff and you laughed with it i've been faking it i'm an expert <laughs> at faking good sense of humor this is what i really like, it's like so again season 90 
eight of SNL. No, that really was a really difficult one. thing to fake. I mean, there's headliners that just have the hokey headliner in a box kind of hack material. That would be a version of of kind of stealing, um, you know, a sense of humor and mm. not having one yourself or something. But all right. So I'll I'll give some of these traits and then I'll give a list of, of the quads. Uh, yeah, talk about the quads. Um, so high intelligence, Acura, Audi, BMW, Lexus, uh, Infinity, Smart Car, Subaru, Volkswagen, low intelligence, Cadillac, Chrysler, Dodge, Ford, GMC, Hummer. <laughs> High openness. Just roasting thousands of people in a sentence. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just roasting America. Um, and uh, this is before he went red pill, by the way. Um, oh, I forgot that he was one that went red pill, too. What's funny is, like, all these people were saying are red pill. Like, just <laughs> they could they could wipe the floor with me on uh, with, uh, you know, these with evolutionary biology. If I were to talk to them about that, like they know the terms, they've studied it, they understand it. And all I can really say is like, haha, they're red pill. I'm yeah. on the good side, but I also don't know anything. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I could I could. Like I know stuff. I, I, th- I know this I think, is a tape dispenser, but <laughs> I think it doesn't. I think you don't need to be too bright to see uh, a hook that someone has, or to see someone kind of being a little manipulative, or uh, just hopping on a popular trend for clickbait. I think mm. that you don't need to be that intelligent intelligent to understand that that's what they're doing i think you got to be low intelligence to (laughs) fall for it that could be it and honestly i don't i don't know this character but it's just that uh not all of them are are grifters some of them just actually may believe that but also it's very possible that they're just after the buck yeah and they figured out a quick way to or not a quick way but an effective way to get a buck whereas the old way gets them thirty thousand dollars every 10 years well, we like validation too, you know. If you, I mean, if some, if if you have a bunch of people that are cheering you on for whatever opinion, you tend to just like, oh, I like these people. Yeah, it's and the cartoon with the them hand. More and more. Here, brother, let me help you up. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. But okay, uh, let's let's keep so doing the cars. So that was intelligence. But now, now these are the big five personality traits. So we got high in openness is a. Uh, Lotus, which I don't even know what a Lotus is, so I must not be high in openness. A Lotus is a car? Um, yeah. A Mini, a Scion, and a Subaru. Subaru sounds open, because Subaru is like, let's let's explore let's the big Oprah. Op- op- yeah, you can visit your Subaru dealer today. It's good that you say that, because this is, again, th- this is kind of advancing... Uh, more to the point of this idea of conspicuous consumption is advancing the ideas past let's show off how many dollars I can burn because that will be a clear indicator of my ability to accrue resources. There's lots of other ways to spend money to advertising and camping's a very, very good one, you know, for a low amount of money, you can advertise that you're adventurous, that you could go to like, Hey, I, I once I was talking to this um, this uh, girl that I really liked and, and now we're friends uh, and sad I, story. There That's was, like baby shoes never worn. I was baby shoes for sale never worn. I, I, it was one that I was bummed about, um, <laughs> but uh, happy for whatever. And she met this guy. She was excited about. It. She's like, she was because you know I'm like I was brimming with adventure, and she was like, well, this guy he's like. He, you know, he he likes the simple, he like camps, he like knows how to build a fire, like knows how to build a fucking fire. That's a, that's a YouTube video. Yeah, that's wood you, and that's some like, gasoline. If you don't know how to We're build a fire, you can learn how to build a fire in four fucking minutes. That's what impressed you. But it goes it goes to tell you there's different things that could signal to attract mates, to, to attract friends. Um whatever like go, going to a fish concert awesome way to like signal your tastes and things it's a it's a vibe it's a it, it's a type of person that's there I, I met some really cool intelligent 
fun people that I hung out with and uh, had a Were great you time. listening to the music the whole time? Uh, no, I mean, they play for like three hours and I mean, it's like the least interesting thing about fish to me, but you know, it's, it's more about the community and like there's stuff going on and you're yeah, like meeting these people to see and my friend and stuff. I, I was, I was, uh, I was passing through and it turned out a good friend of mine happened to be like right where I was driving by. So I'm like, ah, I'm going to stop by and see them. So, so, uh, yeah, that it was more about that. I mean, if. If I'm hanging out and say playing board games and fish comes on, I'll be like, this is some good board gaming music. <laughs> That's what I think about. Fish. I need good to go and then bring it back music. actual music uh, thoughts about it. I'm like, oh, that's great. Tritone substitutions for secondary dominance right there. <laughs> <laughs> Augmented C7. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was funny because they would do things like there was a slow maze my friend went really crazy about that there's a song called maze or something and they played it really slowly oh that's instead fun instead of the normal speed and people were like what the fuck just happened <laughs> uh, like, we should do that <laughs> with stand up <laughs> he told he told our favorite joke at one quarter the speed <laughs> It was the best show I've ever seen. Bitches be shopping. Ah, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, uh, so that that's where I, I think this is very handy because it does. It, like, say you travel a lot, you're advertising a certain thing about yourself. If, if worldly, you're, if you're if you're high in openness, you're gonna travel. You're gonna have like the passport stamps that you can show up to you show your pictures on social media and stuff. People that are low in openness, usually conservatives aren't leaving their hometown. That's a, that's a nerve wracking thing um, to them. They're usually nothing wrong with that. That's where I'm from and uh, everything else, but they just tend to not travel. They tend to be like my, my, parents are in new orleans as we speak they went there because my dad's brother is like having a bunch of medical issues and stuff and uh going as a family to visit and my god the the amount of like concerns that <laughs> that my mom has about like learning how uber works and all of these things it's things that i take for granted that it, all of the experience that I have in life. Cause I'm like, what do you mean? That's just the easiest. Oh yeah. And forget the, the like world. New Orleans is a party all day culture too. Like you're walking around with open containers. There's strip clubs and jazz walking by music everywhere. It's big, nice party. One time when Very I was from 12, I think I was like 10, uh, 11 or 12 or something. And we went to New Orleans and there was uh, my mom saw there was a strip club on this one side of the street and then was like, oh, we got to move to the other side of the, the street really quick. And then like moved us over. But she moved us to a side of the street that was all strip clubs. She didn't look on that side. <laughs> so we ended up walking down the street that was nothing but strip clubs. <laughs> oh, It is a fine day. It is a fine day to be in New Orleans. <laughs> is that Irish? Yeah, it's a fine day to be in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. there you go it needs to be french yeah oh, well, cajun yeah, yeah. It's the bastardized I'm french i'm going to the burlesque show and then saw some very sexy women <laughs> uh low and openness cars buick lincoln oldsmobile range rover and there's your rolls royce showing oh, up on low there. and openness and lincoln is matthew mcconaughey yeah and the, but that's newer too though so maybe they might have got him to like cool it up change a the brand bit. yeah and and so i i think he you know sent out a bunch of questionnaire you know got people's big five personality traits iq tests things like that and then asked them the types of vehicles that they they had and, and do you know if it's named together. after the president it's got to be um lincoln well i think so but no yeah. i don't know that at all 
I I'm not a cars guy at all. Do you care about cars? No. Maybe I would in a different financial bracket, but I don't think I would even then. I would probably be the person that still drives a Toyota if I had like $30 million, I would still just have a Toyota probably. Yeah, there's like more fun things. Yeah. I want an RV. I'll take a boat, but yeah, like, boat. yeah, uh, like a cool van or whatever with, uh, uh, like I wanted to have like a decked out van just to be able to take a bunch of shit with me everywhere. Yeah. But a fancy car, I just never have gotten No, that. it's not in me. And I wasn't brought up with it. And I had, I had more of a computer dad than a car dad. And I think that's why. Yeah. Like computers. Yeah. I'll. I think I've said this many times before, but when I meet someone with lots of money and I see that their computer sucks, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could fix this now. Listen to it hum. And it's like that key doesn't work. This is such an easy thing to, to fix your day with. But yeah. Yeah. I And, and, and that's the thing, too. There's there it certainly uh, used to be the old cliche of of you know like low income people having that that was where like much of the pimping the ride stuff came from where you would invest all of your money into like rims and all of these various and then be your home living in you know a rough neighborhood or whatever else and a lot of times that's because people lower the, the people that are lower in income need to advertise like that much more but uh, and there's also ways of like just wearing something really uh really expensive or expensive seeming or driving that car isn't it more like a fishing lure situation where you want a nice fishing lure to catch yeah, the fish yeah. but your boat doesn't have to be that good so you like catch the prey and you bring them home to yeah. your you know apartment with eight roommates but you have a nice car so yeah. by the time they get there it's I got I'm already here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the hope. Um and 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 so it, there's the, p- people that are lower on income are going to like sometimes str- but then there's also again that's why this personality uh factoring in personality makes such a difference because some people love bragging about the bargains that they got on things which right here flies in the face of of traditional <laughs> ideas of conspicuous consumption where uh like my friend aaron that i hung out with at, at fish like he would often be like oh yeah got it. Uh, sam's club man they got the best deals on hot dogs or whatever they do <laughs> yeah yeah or Co- costco actually costco the ceo of costco threatened to kill people and their family if they lowered the price of the hot dog <laughs> there was some article like if you touch like do what you have to do but if you touch if, the price if, of that hot dog i will kill your it, family you huh? if, the, if they raise the price you mean yeah so it stayed the same. Low. Yeah, they've like been offering the dollar hot dog forever. And they're like, sir, we have to. Our profits are dying. Like, do whatever you have to do. But if you touch that price, like, you're going to be in the paper tomorrow. <laughs> I'll come see you in a different way. <laughs> Maybe he just knows that people come for that dollar hot dog. And they do. just buy crates of things. Once and they lose there. money on it. Yeah. yeah. But that's not what it's for. It's not to make money off. Much like with fast food, they're losing money on the burgers, but they're making tons of money on the sodas. And most people uh, do get the sodas. What's that called again? The uh, high margin, low margin items. Uh, it's the, yeah, the, the, ca- uh, oh man, this is going to drive me crazy. It's, uh. Uh, item is cheap. Get store. Hold on. This is going to drive low, me out of my fucking mind if I the don't. The low margin fallacy. Oh my God. No, you, you would know it. Um, it's, it's not a science term. It's a. The Hubbley Jugula syndrome. No, syndrome is scientific. Oh my God. It, it'll come to me. Um, it's not coming loss up. Loss leader. Loss. Leader. Oh, loss, loss leader. leader. That is a yeah. business term right there. Yeah, yeah. The hot, the hot dog's a loss leader. Is there uh, a reverse to that? Like a win follower? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, opposite. 
of loss leader. Gain leader. There's this there's this Prince concert I I just remembered. It's you can listen to it on Spotify. I think it's called One Night Alone, but he starts it with the uh, um is it uh why does he start it? Uh is it is it better to be uh or is it better to give or receive? Like he asks the audience, someone in the audience, and then they say, It's better to give. And then he says, Well, give up your seat to this woman over in the back. <laughs> I'm gonna call your bluff. Come on, give up your seat. Forces her to give up the seat to someone in the back and then asks someone like, Is it better to be a leader or a follower? And then they say, A leader. And he goes, Too bad. <laughs> what about you? Is it better to be a leader or a follower? And then someone obviously goes, A follower, and he goes, Follow me. And then brings them up on stage. He's like, can I play my guitar for you a little bit? And but I love that he just just pranks them all the way. Like you're supposed to answer, like, of course it's better to give than receive, but then you have to give uh, yeah. up your seat, and then you're gonna say, like, yeah, it's better to lead. Like, too bad. <laughs> Lost leader and uh what was the did you have another one? There's no win follower. No, it was a gain leader. Oh, yeah. gain leader. Okay. I don't know what that means, but I guess it's the opposite. Yeah, loss and gain. That that sounds better than win and loss in business terms. It's a novel product which may actually not sell as well because of its novelty. Okay. I don't know if you would get better at business by going to business school, but I think you could get a better job like at a business. Like you could be number 17 at a really big business, but I don't think if you went, if you learned all the terms, you would necessarily make the best business decisions. I mean, it's interesting because I've, I've interviewed tons of people like, you know, I know a lot about this stuff. I've interviewed like behavioral economics people. I like know a lot of the, uh, the various subconscious evolutionary drives that prime me to spend i know exactly where my weak points are and when i'm most apt to like spend money on a fancy thing or whatever hasn't stopped me once from doing it not <laughs> fucking once yeah and, you're just aware of it now <laughs> yeah i remember once i was listening to i was listening to i think it was a uh uh dan Ariely. i gotta reach out to him to see if oh, he he's good come to the camp out um, but I was listening to one of his books, uh, probably predictably irrational or something. And it was talking about, um, uh, impulse buys in convenience stores, you know, like getting a candy bar or whatever. And I had a long drive and I was probably tired and whatever else my, uh, all of my, um, self-discipline depleted by this point anyway, in my defense, but I walked into that convenience store and I was sitting there, I was thinking about that book and everything he just said. And I'm just like, don't, don't buy candy. <laughs> just don't. And I walked out of there with the most candy. It was, <laughs> it was, it was such a ridiculous, it was like shopping for Halloween. But uh, couldn't, couldn't someone from the strictly psychological sense come up with a reason as to the fact that you knew that part of you that's rebellious and the rascal, the irreducible, irreducible mm. rascality of man, like mm. is saying that like, no, go against what Dan Ariely told you. Like, yeah, don't, don't just follow the robotic version of past you that wanted to make the good decision act into what you want now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it helps. It, learning all this stuff has helped my life tremendously and it makes it way more interesting and I make better decisions because of it. And it, it like it, it helps me understand how to de deliver messages better and everything else. But it is hilarious that you would you would think after this much time, like, you read enough books about behavioral economics or marketing or whatever, you would think like I would have figured out all of YouTube or something <laughs> by now. Instead, it's like some fourteen year old kid that like picked up some little trick and. Yeah. Up and, <laughs> and the hunger and yeah. the hunger and the laser focus of wanting to win in that world. Yeah. And because I've made some gains in, in the Instagram world. Like that's the only place I really look at 
me is where I've made some some good gains in a social mm-hmm. media context like Facebook, eh, Twitter, nothing, uh, TikTok, zero. But but Instagram, I spent years like forcing myself to every day make something and put it up in the morning, no matter what. And then like years later, after I made some gains, then it was like, OK, now I'm comfortable and I'm kind of lazy. And then I cycle back. But I was thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, any any way you want to win, you just do need to laser focus on I'm going yeah. to show up every day on this thing for better or worse. And just that's it. Even though everything in my body is telling me, like, take that day off. Don't don't share stuff today. It's annoying. Don't be annoying. <laughs> you have to fight every instinct in you. And that's it. And that comes at a loss too, because part of your soul dies. Mm-hmm. But you're you're fucking amazing at what you do. And and uh, the soul is infinite, so it doesn't matter if part of your soul dies. Yeah, you can kill off bits of it here. And yeah, you there. can kill it part of it every day. It's fine. It's a plant. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you know, like integrity is another thing that that would be advertised to. You know, like I, I would say, like buying locally. And things like that, I would say that buying green and th- like there's there's a lot of research that shows people that own Priuses, like like most people would rather have a Prius, um, than a more efficient, cheaper like Honda, and it's because, because the name, it's because it advertises like oh you have a Prius, you have a green car, so it's advertising that you're being eco-friendly even if there's cars that are more eco-friendly but don't aren't known for it oh so it has that so there so now there's there's like so there's potentially really so when we talk about these things i think at first when you learn about them they sound like this negative thing of like oh my stupid brain and i spend like an idiot just to show off and we'll just wear fancy hats on a podcast so People think that we're just the coolest motherfuckers. Yeah, we had to cancel the camp out for this. <laughs> we took all the money and put it in these two hats. <laughs> these hats were so fucking <laughs> expensive, guys. It's unbelievable and worth it. I sh- mm-hmm. We should have paid double, honestly. Um, but uh, uh, but there's also there there's ways that we can learn about this and then be more mindful of like. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm going to advertise uh, that I'm eco-friendly. I, I'm willing to like spend more money, uh, even even at the risk of that also being irrational, to advertise th- um, that uh, that I care about the environment, to care that I I care about art, you know, and creativity. Yeah. I'll I'll spend more money because those are things that you value and you want to advertise that to other people and attract like-minded people so it's not it's not as like uh i don't know um as much of i i guess when i first started hearing about these concepts you feel stupid or something you know for for having spent that way or to be hijacked by your genes in that way or like oh why am i spending all that money just to like my i'm I I just spent three hundred dollars on on a date because my genes think that I have a chance of passing other genes on into the future. I don't give a fuck about my genes. My genes don't even know that I'm here. Like, why would I care about such a thing? Why did I just waste all of that money? I had a lot of those thoughts early on in first learning about some of these concepts, and now I'm just like, ah, you become aware of them, then you just figure out the things that that you do value what's and, the and biggest example of that for you like is there some i mean i know the the 300 dollar date was maybe a hypothetical or perhaps not but is there one in oh, particular you're like well dollar dates way too many times <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, the, you mean things like that just yeah. spending behavior yeah because i've never ne- i've never regretted those types of things i've never been like oh, i shouldn't have spent that much on the time out i always felt like the experience was worth more than the the number and the number can always be replenished but the experience is a once in a lifetime thing I, I, probably like my thrill seeking stuff probably like my my early rebellious stuff or certain like i have uh 
uh, my fondness for drugs. You know, sometimes I question how much of that is like advertising or you uh. know, social things and whatnot. So, yeah, there's a lot of I mean, I've done. I mean, when you're when you're younger, too, when you when you value, um, it, you know, the idea of like advertising these really hard things to do. That's why like 14 year olds or whatever, like we were talking about, they can laser focus on fucking learning guitar like crazy and just obsess and make it their whole thing and become a fucking rock star when they're like 22 or That's whatever old now. because they're just like so look at like Aaron focused. the bassist who's like eight and is already like a YouTube uh million or beyond millions of subscriber and is like playing these Jocko lines like with the feel and everything <laughs> Oh, that's fun. It's I crazy. Seen them. There's, there's, I follow that that girl, that uh, the drummer, like uh, I oh, there's know, so Na many Natalie now. or something like that. She did some stuff with like Dave Grohl and stuff. And, See, oh, there's like there's so thousands of amazing. those. And yeah. I was thinking like how it's so you and I don't have kids, not together, not with other people. Maybe one day, maybe one day, maybe but probably one day not. We'll have kids together. <laughs> Who knows? Like I mean, if we get bored of the camp out, the space station, mom town, mom maybe, kids, yeah, we'll like make mom kids in like 2015. <laughs> Just cloning mom kids. <laughs> yeah, they'll but be, that's like they'll... last stop on the road. That's when the show's <laughs> over. That's like the last big spark before we kill ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but but like the we kids just had, we, some kid comes into existence finds out that he was he was the fucking uh, dna uh, dna spliced of r2 sperm and then we killed ourselves immediately <laughs> afterwards and he just has to exist yeah he, a he has podcast. a whole mum town that we left to him yeah and our, you like, should be happy you own mum town it's the greatest town it's got a space station a town it's got a camp out it's got an outhouse from this there's a story behind that outhouse did you know there's art piece <laughs> But I was going to say that like people, people our age and younger, like they have children and their, their interests and they can like share those interests with them. And then they, they bring them up. And then before they, cause there's people touring as serious musicians now that I'm thinking about how like, oh, 10 years ago, they probably hadn't even picked the thing up. And I have a memory of the last 10 years doing basically the same kind of thing, you know, drawing and comedy and, you know, waking up and this kind of thing. But they, they had a whole arc from zero to, mm -hmm. to big things. It's, it's crazy how fast things can happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's an, it's inspiring in a way if you let it. Yeah. It can also destroy you if you let it too. If you succumb to jealousy and envy, then it'll destroy you. But if you're like, oh, that's so cool that maybe, you can. Maybe it's why I enjoy Instagram so much. I guess I'm not the jealous type. I know what jealousy feels like. And mm -hmm. sometimes I'm scrolling through and I'm like, how's this motherfucker have this and that? That happens. It doesn't, uh, you know, it's not like I don't understand those thoughts and feelings, but I sure don't experience them not that much. And so Instagram's a treat for me because I'm yeah. like, oh, look at all this cool stuff people are doing. Yeah. I'm yeah, like it depends Instagram. what kind of day you're having. I certainly don't live in it, but of course I'll like, I'll experience it and be like, oh, recognize that. Oh, what are you, what are you trying to do? You're trying yeah. to, trying to have more and be more than what everyone, like <laughs> yeah. jealous of this guy's money, you're jealous this person's younger, this person's better drummer. When's the last time you even practiced drums? What are you, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This person that devoted their life to this thing is better than me at the thing that I just remembered existed. I mean, it's easy. It's easy for me to like start to get jealous of like, say, other stand up success or like other podcast success, especially like as much as I believe in the show and love doing it and think like most podcasts are like just not as good as this one, frankly. And uh, but I look and I'm like, well, we just do it different. Thing. like i'm not doing like their like stand-ups aren't doing the same thing as like i don't usually the second i start having those thoughts i'm like ah it doesn't really i don't 
I don't know. That just doesn't negatively affect me that much. Usually it's just like, oh, I like the lighting on that. <laughs> use. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to tweak the thing and take that aspect. Yeah. That's cool. Um, That's just how it should it be. Inspiration. We should just act like we have a billion listeners and a billion dollars, but we just live very humbly. <laughs> and we just like to live humbly. But yeah. We're not flying to France and playing arenas. It's, it's too <laughs> excessive. It's very gosh. Is that the term? Uh, gosh. Like G A U C H E, Gaudi, gosh. Gaudi? Yeah. Mm. Gaudi? I, I don't know what we're Not, not G O S H, not oh golly gosh, but. And we're back, and we were just talking about uh, Conspicuous words. consumption, words, finding words. Let's move on to the next word and the big five. Did we do all the cars? Nope. We're Can we do the cars the real one. quick? Yeah, sure. Um, so there's high conscientiousness. So conscientious is, is like how clean, organized, on top of things, punctual, that sort of thing you are. A uh, pretty big predictor of success as well, conscientiousness. Um, Damn. So I know. Um, Acura, Honda, Lexus, Volvo, and Toyota. Low Yes, I've got one. Maybe I'm going to be successful now. Ooh. You already are successful. You do two podcasts. You suck your own ass. What more do you want? <laughs> Shut up. I want more. I want I want complete financial liberation with the ability to like just that's that's the thing you you uh sorry, go on. What do you no, want to do? I didn't even have do? anything else. That's the only two things I can think of that I wanted. Just all of it. Yeah. Um, and none of my friends or family to die. Okay. Other people can die, sure. <laughs> go nuts. It, it, it's that's the funny thing of comparing yourself to others too is like some people get really good at a thing and then you're, you're trying to pick and choose so it's like just because like for a listener at home like ramin is like so incredible at sucking his own ass mm -hmm. that doesn't mean there's not like other parts of his <laughs> life that like there's not other, there's not other party <laughs> parts he can't reach <laughs> parts that you couldn't improve on yeah before. and the suction like it, there could be more like suction going on yeah he's a, 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 as as much as you're admiring his ass sucking yeah he also goes to bed tonight beating himself up about how wanting to be a better ass sucker mm -hmm. um so low conscientiousness is ferrari jeep mitsubishi in Pontiac. Pontiac. I wouldn't have guessed Ferrari. They... Like, so it's Ferraris like are messy inside? Well, you know, like recklessness, general. Yeah. And Ferrari is the sports car. Yeah. Like, like you think it's like, well, man. Lamborghini too, but no. Nah, Ferrari is Coca-Cola. Even if Lamborghini is technically better in all axis, it's, it's still mm -hmm. Ferrari is the name. McDonald's, yeah. Coca-Cola, Ferrari. Um... That's it. There's no more cars. Um, <laughs> McDonald's cars. <laughs> high high extroversion uh, is uh, Aston Martin, BMW, Ferrari. Yes. Oh, um, how did it get into both? It, uh, that shows up on. Oh, uh, people have five different personality traits. Um, so some people. I'm gonna write Dan Ariely an angry letter that he accidentally put. The same car in two categories. Oh, this isn't Dan Ariel. He's, oh, really? It's, Je it's Jeffrey Miller's. Oh, Jeffrey Miller. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and the many. <laughs> I'm still going to write Dan Ariel. He's going to be so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write this. And I don't have this accent either. What are you saying? That's not too far off from Oh, he Dan has that Ariel. accent? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. Well, Dan that's Ariel good. It's a good try, you know. A really interesting guy. Well, we'll have to talk about a bunch about his research on an episode sometime. Um, oh, and then Porsche is up there too for high extroversion. And then low extroversion, Akira, Hyundai, Lexus, Saab, Subaru, <laughs> and Volvo. I said Saab so weird, didn't I? Did you hear that? I think that's right. But all those are just such background cars. Like mm -hmm. Hyundai, like you can't even be a Honda. 
Yeah. You're a Hyundai or a yeah. Saab. Like I thought they stopped making that in 1986. They, they really are like, yeah, that's a low extroversion. That's a, a Volvo. That's for sure an introvert. Yeah. Car. <laughs> it's fucking i don't know that party was kind of lame until the volvo showed up and then that party got started yeah <laughs> <laughs> what about kia kia didn't even make any list oh actually high agreeableness coming up next oh kia's on there akira uh which i don't even know what that is uh a daewoo so and, yeah, akira is an anime but i don't know if it was a car uh a geo and a Saturn. I can see that. Those are like oh, bubbly. Saturn. Those are kind of like bubbly vehicles, sort of. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, like bubblegum vehicles. Low agreeableness, BMW, Hummer, Maserati. Fuck you. <laughs> Mercedes. Hummer is big disagreeableness oh, energy. Yeah. Oh, big time. And Nissan. And then High neuroticism is uh, Volkswagen and Volvo. So, th- so that's saying like people that are experiencing more neuroses, like mm. anxiety, depression, that sort of thing. Volkswagen and Volvo. Low Audi? neuroticism, Acura, Porsche, and Scion. Happier people, I guess. That's the other thing, too, with all the signaling stuff is, is it's like... Boy, I if if I wasn't clear earlier, so much of this is non-conscious things. We we don't have we don't have the faintest clue of of you know like I'm going to buy this to advertise this and that thing, and even things and and not only that, but we we get rewarded for certain character traits. And then our our subconscious will pick up on that and then make us more of that thing that we get rewarded for. So because uh, in, in humans, especially happiness is such a strong signal of like, I'm doing good. I'm healthy right now. Why? It, you know, you're not happy if you're unhealthy and not doing well in life and everything else. And so if you're happy, you're automatically advertising like, I'm doing pretty good. I'm getting those resources. I'm on top of a social hierarchy. I'm <laughs> attracting mates. People like me. And so because of that, w- w- humans are probably subconsciously primed to behave and maybe even experience more happiness than is like realistic you know you, 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 in a, that's, in a way. i've never heard that angle so we're we're wired to perhaps experience more happiness in order to signal uh fitness in a way yeah even though there's also the other argument that happiness is not adaptive and we're like more uh we're more evolved to scan for negativity and only focus on the negative because focusing on the positive doesn't keep us alive but focusing on dangers does keep us alive but also when it comes to social stuff socially you're not supposed to be a mopey mess and scares people away around the office and stuff so you might actually be happier in not even pretending to be like physically feeling happier in the in the office than like what you would be otherwise if it weren't for just like the social pressure like if you were alone in the office you'd be experiencing uh you know th- this level of happiness some like an average a five or lower or whatever but because you're surrounded by people and there's the pressure to be happy and you'll get promoted if you're a happy person to get along with if your brain picks up on that enough it might actually be uh, making you perceive just more happiness being around yeah. the office, which is fucking weird. And that, that is weird. It, it, it's almost like brain candy uh, a little bit. You remember that movie? No. That's a good one. Throw that on the list of... Sounds like an 80s one. Yeah. 80s uh, movie? The, the Kids in the Hall made it. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. And they're back. Yeah, I haven't seen any of their new stuff. I want to check it out. I haven't watched TV in weeks. Oh, that's not true. I, I haven't have. watched TV in a week. I've watched bad TV. Yeah. Watch uh, old, bad, all, all of it. Them. Breakdowns. Breakdowns of bad. 
That's another thing we get to advertise to our knowledge of and our tastes in various things. So there's, you know, diff- different shows, show uh, TV shows are going to do, be doing the same thing. Various TV shows are ad, uh, are advertising, uh, you know, intelligence or low intelligence. You got your like reality TV show versus, um, I don't know, like some show like Billions or something like that. Where it's like, have you seen Billions? They're throwing around a bunch of fancy financial terms, and you know, uh, and then and then there's. Uh, uh, Game of Thrones maybe signals that you can keep up with a lot of uh, disparate storylines and characters that kind of all look the same on first take. Yeah, yeah. That makes me appreciate the whole thing. You need the you need to like look at a map of where they're all from and everything to follow it all. Yeah, like the 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 upside of everything becoming more diverse and everything. If you're watching a movie like Eternals, you're like, yes, so easy. There's this. The white character there's this uh deaf character there's the black guy there's the pakistani guy i don't have to like do this thing with early game of thrones it's like wait that's a different white bearded guy than that white bearded guy than that white bearded which is the right one but then when it's like very different looks it's like ah so easy to take in who the who the yeah. characters are yeah well let's do it with movies really quick let's just try to see if we can think yeah, high, what's a high and openness movie? That would be like Amelie or something like that. Oh, uh, the most popular poster in college. Yeah, exactly. And what's a that low... in Cats? <laughs> what, what's like a what's a low openness like TV? But, you know, that's again, that's just a kind low of and like, openness TV that's just show. Like game shows, you know, like if, if you Tucker Carlson, like or that's not a show. I, I think I think just like your HDTV sort of uh, this game house show-y type stuff. Um, like they don't even fix up the house. It's just this house on <laughs> they HDTV. Don't do anything with <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. Today we go into a person's house, a random person's house, and we do nothing. Yeah, no change. Change is scary. There's enough change happening in the world. This house stays the same. <laughs> on hgtv <laughs> don't move a thing we don't pick up a dirty sock nothing there was this one hgtv show where they build pools for people and one of the people on the contractor team is just called woman i'm Les. this is rob this is big rob and this is woman and then you watch it a little more and woman is his mother <laughs> but they just call her woman and she's down with it too and it's all lighthearted and stuff, but the first time you see it, you're like, this is a funny world. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. I'm not making it up. I can't think of uh, I can't think of TV shows or movies that would indicate uh, conscientiousness in a certain way. Maybe like you know, Train Spotting would be indicated that would be like a low conscientiousness type movie or something like there's that. Because drugs or, and um, yeah, recklessness and yeah. stuff. Um, whereas maybe like, uh, just your like Hallmark channel or something like that would be a higher in conscientiousness or something. I don't know. I might be, might be off in that. That would be a fun study to do high yeah. in extroversion. That seems like a Pixar type of thing. Maybe high, high extroversion. You think Pixar high extroversion? Maybe not. They do have some really thoughtful, uh, cause Pixar could also be uh, neuroticism. Sometimes they get oh, of the course. feels Inside going. Out. Oh, love that Inside movie. Out is all about every in a neuroticism, sadness, anger. I love it. Yeah, one of my favorite movies ever. Um, Pixar's got a lot of hits. When you look I gotta at watch more Pixar. Encanto, films. Coco, I haven't seen it. Haven't Soul, seen it. Soul, I saw Inside it. Out. Yeah, I gotta watch more. You're right. They're awesome um big com- red is one or red scare or whatever it's called the one where she has her period in whatever. toronto in early 2000s yeah mm-hmm. that's a fun one uh yeah i want to see it what's all right so what's like a low extroversion movie i don't know room um, where she's trapped in a room because she's kidnapped <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> 
That's good. And then wants to avoid people because she's traumatized. Yeah, I guess from... it's like what kind of movies would people go to by themselves would be a low extroversion movie. You know, that's that's what it would be getting at, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, there's. I wonder if there's... Agreeableness. There, is there many movies of just a person alone? Because even in like Tom Hanks' Terminal, he's alone in the airport, but he has various friends that help him out with stuff and the Stanley Tucci character, there's a lot of interactions, but then cast away, he's alone with the, the volleyball Wilson for a little bit. Leo got there... roughed up by a bear in left for dead. In but the is one. he alone in the movie? Just him through much I, of the time he's alone. Cause I wonder if we, we don't really like to see that for the most part, because we want to see humans interacting with other humans. Even if we're going to a thing alone, we probably most of the time don't want to read or watch something about just an alone person with their thoughts. That's, we get enough of that. I have a rec for you and I've probably mentioned it before, but if not, it needs to be recommended. The movie, happy people. I probably might. It's a documentary. Funny people, actually. happy people. Oh, it's this dude. He's alone in the woods in Siberia, and it's just his life. It's just a dude with an axe and some dogs, <laughs> and he just like he's just building a structure and shit and figuring things out. And then he just has to like. Oh, I got to get over here through the water. So just cuts down a, just spends a day cutting down a tree and making a fucking canoe out of that axe, getting in the canoe that he just made and then paddling down the river with his fucking axe. That's satisfying. That's what a satisfying life looks like. (laughs) He loves it. It, it, But it's like fucking brutal, man. Mm. Brutal. Uh, Like then he gets to the next area where there's, you know, he has a shed built that has all of these supplies and stuff that he's going to need for the next season but a tree had fallen on it and crushed the thing and he just has to like start fucking going again it's crazy and then Uh, unhappy people would just be about just scrolling and having all your needs met already yeah um all right well i'll let the rest of you guys of uh figure out on your own what a high agreeableness and low agreeableness movie would be. Ramin needs to get going. Oh, we, we don't want to wrap it up for hundred percent completion. I, okay. Give me a high agreeableness movie or TV show. High Probably agreeableness. Ted Lasso. Oh, for, for high sure. Agreeableness. Low friends? agreeableness. Oh, friends. Yeah, for sure. Low, low agreeableness could be Seinfeld. Be like, oh, that's interesting. Like yeah, they're very antisocial in a way Kirby outside enthusiasm. of their circle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Kirby, like yeah, very much. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, Succession, kind of. Oh, Succession. Fuck off. That's like the catchphrase of yeah, Succession. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Um, all right. Then High in Neuroticism TV show or movie? Uh, like, like probably Uncut Rec- Gems. Rec Room for a Dream too would be a good one. Yeah, Uncut the Gems Road. was neurotic. Was very anxious the whole time. Yeah, but the gambling it, Adam Sandler like for anxious people though. Oh, it's not for them, mm. but could be for them because it's I cathartic feel like really to see dark. it. Yeah, that movie was intense, man. I mm-hmm. I watched like the first thirty minutes of that movie before I had to go to bed, and I was like, I be- I got to turn this off, or I'm just not gonna <laughs> sleep tonight. Like my heart was just pounding. It was awesome. Then I showed it to just some people, and I'm like, well, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, um, I don't know. Another one. I I don't have a big encyclopedia of movies, especially even when we've prepared for a podcast about it. I'm not. I don't have a lot of them in there. I have just so much content and micro content. It's just melted all together. Mm-hmm. Low neuroticism. There again, that would be, that would be something like, uh, I, I think like uh, the Marvel movies or something like that. They're just yeah, kind very of comfortable. Like a, yeah. Very comfortable. Like the good guys are going to win. And yeah, they're dressed in bright primary <laughs> colors <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and none of them have powers that overlap each other. Like, this is the strength guy. Well, I guess Thor and Hulk kind of overlap each other. But, you know, this is speed. This is energy blasts. Or this is intelligence. This is strength. Mm. Very clear-cut roles. 
and hierarchy. Yeah. Well, everybody, if you want to advertise your appreciation for our show and you want to uh, embolden us with the resources and confidence and inspiration to keep on making more of this and our awesome uh, bonus content, which if you haven't seen and you're like, I don't know, is it worth five dollars for my own episode yes. <laughs> made specifically for me? If you have to ask that, you're crazy anyway. But we even have a few free ones on the YouTube channel that you can check out. Please support the boys and uh, think about the camp out. Or if you don't, uh, if you're too far away, we don't. We don't expect any. We have a bunch of people flying, but yeah, I certainly if you live don't in Japan, you have anyone. to come. If you live in Japan, you have you to come. You have to, or we so will delighted. dishonor all your family. But we don't expect. That's crazy that people are flying. That's awesome. It's a, we're going to be you're going to be in a special club, the Honeybees, or something like that. But if you know people in Raleigh, if you know people in the there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of Asheville and uh, Charleston. If you know anyone in the area, spread the word because there's three months for them to get uh, all caught up on Mind Under Matter and figure out what we're all about. Check out the camp out. Just booked another scientist today. Cool. I'm getting to the point now. Can you that, say who it is? Uh, yeah, I, I said at the beginning of the show, Stephen Churchill. The, oh, the okay. I thought you said He's another gonna, scientist. He's going to, uh, no, just him today. Um, I, we're actually getting to the point where I need to like sit Cut down and people. think about how many we are going to have each no, day. No, cram them like, into one room and don't tell them that there's more than them coming and then surprise the them. Is I, I'm thinking like five a day or something like that because, and then, and then Breakfast, if they're hanging out and then the area. Lunch, they, snack. Dinner, yeah. and then another a camp, snack, and then, and then a campfire a snack. one, yeah. something like that, so that uh, people can wander around. I showed them the property again today. It's like the, the whole point is people get to wander around and check out a bunch of different things and pop in. I'm so excited. I'm here. I'm in Raleigh now. I hope you get your tickets. We're doing awesome things. And until next time, keep on salivating, honeys. Do you know